Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Avengers Endgame figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at technically the first smaller normal 1-6 scale figure in the Endgame line. Yes, we've looked at the D23 cap and yes, we've looked at the armoured version of Thanos, but those are kind of special edition figures, let's call it. This is more of a normal product release. And Rocket, who would have guessed it? Not me personally, I didn't think this guy was going to be coming out at least for another couple of months I thought we'd be getting Ant-Man and the Wasp first. I know, they're from their own solo movie, but nevertheless I thought they'd be coming out before this guy, Gamora, maybe a couple of other random Marvel releases here and there before we got Endgame Rocket, but nevertheless here he is, and I'm sure a lot of people were excited for him. Me, personally, I was more looking forward to some of the other releases first. Technically, this guy is just a re-release of sorts from the previous two Rocket Raccoon figures, and yes, we will be doing a comparison throughout the course of this video. Now, if you do want to pick up your very own Endgame Rocket, he is in stock and ready to ship right now with ToysWonderland.com, and I have included the link for them down in the description below, so definitely go ahead and check them out, and while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new hot toys third party or sideshow content goes live on the channel either way what we're gonna do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for Rocket himself. Now, based off what I'm seeing here, I would assume that when we get more Endgame figures, they're all going to kind of have this artistic style representation on the front of the box. This isn't a picture of the figure. It's more of a oil painting look about it. It's very soft in the details. It looks great, don't get me wrong, but I wish a picture of the figure was on the front here because this expression, it's not even what we're getting on the figure itself. But nevertheless, we're not here to really nitpick the packaging. Can see Rocket on the side. Then again, Rocket and a whole bunch of legal information on the back. But either way, let's get him out here. I'm keen to see if there have been any noticeable paint improvements between this one and the Infinity War version. Again, we will be doing that comparison throughout the course of this video. I did happen to catch Billy Doon's video on this particular figure. He did a great job, mind you, and he did showcase the comparisons, but I can't wait to see the differences in hand. Now, where this guy really shines, in my personal opinion, is the amount of stuff he does come with. You have to really be in love with Rocket to be getting a fourth version of the character, and I think this time they really have sold the figure a little bit more due to its smaller size by including a bunch of accessories. But here we have the figure himself, and just as I guessed it, he looks pretty much identical to the previous versions, except, of course, for the outfit. Don't worry, we'll be looking at him in much more detail in just a second. Now, in terms of all the stuff that he does come with, you can see all of his accessories are laid out here very, very nicely. What we're going to do now, however, is get all of this stuff laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with Endgame Rocket. Now, as you can see, he comes with a fair amount of stuff, and that is definitely a good thing, because if you're going to reuse the body, and if you're going to reuse the head sculpt, you may as well give us a bunch of accessories. And to my knowledge, every single one of these pieces is brand new, except for, of course, the display base. This is pretty much a rinse and repeat from the Endgame slash Infinity War display bases. They're all this shape, so it definitely does work. You've got the Ravager logo in this nice sort of dark background. I really like the way it looks. And a very, very glossy Avengers 8. Now, I really do wish they went with the metal nameplates. You can even see my Rocket logo is a tiny bit crooked. I wish they'd tampograph that on there properly. That is a little bit unsightly. But either way, it definitely does get the job done. Now, it does come with a tiny little dynamic fly pole. It's really cute cute when they include these tiny little ones. It's, in comparison to a bigger one, maybe, I don't know, a third of the size? It's quite small, but it definitely, again, will get the job done. You can have Rocket in any kind of floating, flying, or gun shooting poses, and it'll look pretty darn awesome. Now, this piece right here was a big draw for me, personally. The Nano Gauntlet, it looks really, really good. It's painted very nicely, detailed very nicely. It is hollow in the back, so you can install your finger in the back of there, but the issue is, the hole is only to about there, so you can't really install this on a figure without it looking a little bit weird. That being said, you can definitely still do it and sort of fudge it into your display, but then again, it doesn't light up, it's not really weathered or sort of texturized at all to make it look any more realistic, and the fingers don't move. So it's a very basic piece, but it definitely works very nicely for display. You can pop it there, or of course, have Rocket holding it, running throughout the battlefield, and it'll look pretty darn good. Now, Hot Toys have done a really awesome thing here and given us two versions of Rocket Scarf. You've got a sort of rubbery PVC style one that's painted and detailed and sort of pre-sculpted in that nice draped look, 
or you have the fabric one. I am personally leaning towards the fabric one because technically this one is supposed to mimic the look of this anyway, and it's wired, so you can have him in a dynamic pose with this sort of flowing off in the wind, and I really do like that. And of course, the little frayed edges look a lot more accurate than what they tried to replicate here, and it kind of just didn't quite work. Now, he does come with two versions of some blasters. He comes with bigger ones and smaller ones, and then he comes with duplicates for the other side. As far as I'm aware, they are identical. They've just sort of copied and pasted them, but they do work quite nicely. I like the little blue bit on the barrel there. Very nice. It sort of brings the whole thing to life. I also do like the gold on the bottom. They're very very nicely weathered. They do look like they've sort of been around for quite a few years. A little bit of an oil build-up, if you will, and they do look really, really good. So I can't wait to pop those in Rocket's hands. Now, one of the final pieces he does come with is, of course, the Ether Extractor. He used this to extract the Ether out of Jane Foster, and you can see it's in there. It's glowing red. It looks really good. When you have it under some bright lights like this, it really does come to life and glow very, very nicely. And it is, again, sculpted, weathered, and painted very, very nicely. Now, he does come with two versions of his goggles. Why does he come with two? Well, I'm about to tell you. One is to pop on the eyes, and then one is to pop on the top of the head. Now, Hot Toys have made a very cool and interesting engineering decision here by switching the polarity of the magnets. So, they actually sort of propel each other if you put them next to each other, but the way they've done it is basically when you pop them on Rocket's head, they are immediately propelled to the right location. So, this one will only go on the top of its head, not on his actual face there. You can see it wants to flip around, whereas when you take these, they actually just magnet to the front and won't go on the top. They're propelled right back down. That is a very cool touch and something that I wasn't really expecting Hot Toys to do at all, so I'm glad they put the extra effort in and made that happen. They could have very easily just used the same magnet and I'm sure it would have worked just fine, or even used a strap, but this is my preferred way of doing it. Now, unfortunately, he only comes with three tiny little hands. I think they could have included a few more, but at the very least, you get some detail work on this one, whereas the other one is just more of a basic one. This one right here, you can see it's textured detailed and painted very nicely, but they are very, very tiny. Either way, what we're going to do now is get Rocket himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have the endgame version of Rocket Raccoon standing straight up and down the light box. No crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, he is looking absolutely fantastic. This happens to be my favorite look for Rocket throughout all of the MCU movies, so I am so very glad to be reviewing this figure way earlier than anticipated. And as I said, he looks absolutely awesome. He stands much better than the previous versions because of his little boots. He can now actually stand up without having to fall over all the time because of the excessive weight of the tail, pulling him back with those tiny little footsies. But this one now stands up perfectly fine. The accessories all slot onto their required places very, very easily. The scarf was a tiny bit of a challenge because of the nature of pulling off that head. The neck joint is rather tight, but either way, once you get it on there, I think it looks really good. Either way, what we're going to do now is get him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Now, the benefit, of course, of Rocket being so tiny is that he can fit pretty much entirely in frame. So either way, taking a look at the figure up close and personal, I've taken the liberty of popping the goggles on the top of the head, and of course, the more PVC-style scarf, you will see the cloth one on the figure a little bit later in the video. But either way, I think he looks really, really good. Now, they've had to extend the neck ever so slightly to accommodate the scarf itself, but once it's on there, you really can't tell. It works perfectly fine. So too does the rest of its outfit. It looks really, really good. It's got that rubberized sort of texture, which I know I've complained about in the past, but in this scale, it kind of does work, and it has the right texture that it needs. It's got all the detail work. It looks absolutely fantastic. All of the armor bits are painted and sculpted very, very nicely, and it extends all the way down to the holsters. The only issue that I do have is these blasters sit very, very loose in there. You can kind of push them down, but even in, they are still fairly loose. As soon as you knock them, they will go flying. So do be careful when you are posing up your rocket, especially on that display base. You don't want to have him sort of upside down, and then these go falling out. So just be careful. The legs themselves, you can already see a slight amount of creasage. I've moved them forward a little tiny bit, but because of the nature of how stiff these joints are, they really do sort of crush that rubber in there. So I'd be very, very careful if I were you when I was posing the legs themselves. Now, these little knee pads are kind of cute. They float around, they definitely do the job, but as you can see, this one kind of has a mind of its own. It just likes to go any which way. It is very, very loose on there. 
It works for when you're bending the knee, it means that these won't sort of get torn or ripped, but I would have liked them be a little bit more fixed, maybe even a faux knee pad stuck onto the front of the suit itself, like we've seen with a couple of other figures. They also tend to tuck themselves underneath the straps, so make sure you are tucking them over the top there so you don't ruin the look of the outfit itself. Now there is one cool thing and kind of not so cool thing about these feet. They have these little joints, but they're done in such a way that they look absolutely horrid. As you can see, when you move it, they kind of stick out like that. It kind of reminds me of a cheaper style toy. I kind of wish they'd omitted that entirely rather than done that, because this boot is sculpted and painted absolutely stunningly. I don't know why they decided to kind of ruin the whole thing by including a gimmick such as this. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Rocket Collection to date. That is the Guardians of the Galaxy slash Infinity War version, because technically they both look exactly like that, then this is the Guardians of the Galaxy 1 version. Let's start off by comparing the oldest to the newest. Now you can definitely tell that there have been major improvements in terms of the sculpt and paintwork. Don't get me wrong, you could technically get this sculpt with the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 one, but the paintwork was a lot different, just like this one right here. A lot lighter, a lot more lifelike. I absolutely adore the way this one looks. Don't get me wrong, for back in the day this one was good too, but side by side you can tell the difference. This one looks more like Rocket, this one kind of looks like a generic raccoon. The body itself is identical, but I do actually appreciate the fact that we did get feet here and now we're getting shoes. That means this one stands a lot better, and also the tail, as you can see, this one is a little bit sort of more loose on the ball joint, whereas this one is a lot better connected, so that means it won't fall off anywhere near as much. The tails actually do look different between the two. This one has more of a curve to it, but this one's a lot straighter and the sculpting is a lot sharper. It turns out that when you sculpt for a little bit soft it kind of looks a little bit more realistic, so I do appreciate the changes that Hot Toys have made there. Don't get me wrong though, the new one still is definitely a pain to get standing. Now let's compare the Infinity War version to the brand new Endgame version. Technically, they aren't actually that far apart in terms of the paintwork. They look pretty much identical. We are noticing a very subtle difference is the tiny little sections in between the eyebrows. These ones are a lot sharper, these ones are a lot softer, but either way, the rest of it remains pretty much unchanged. The colour is definitely the same and the sculpt is definitely the same between the two. Which one do I prefer? I'm kind of honestly leaning towards this one right here. It has a more classic sort of look about it with the scarf and this blue style outfit. This one is still great, don't get me wrong, but if I absolutely had to pick between the two, I'm definitely going for this one. Now, of course, this review would be complete without a side-by-side -side comparison between Rocket and Groot. Now, this Groot is the Infinity War version, the teenage Groot, if you will. I don't actually know why we didn't get a reissue of this in the Endgame line to go along with Rocket. Either way, you can, of course, pick up the Infinity War one and pop him in your endgame display. I'm actually struggling personally as to whether or not he goes with the Infinity War crew or the endgame crew. I kind of want to go all out with my endgame display and include as many characters as I can, so you'll have to let me know down in the comments below which way you think I should go. Just going over articulation on Rocket Raccoon himself. Now this is my personal copy of the figure, I purchased it with my own money, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. When you get yours in hand, I'm sure you can push the joint a little bit further than I'm willing to go. Either way, starting off with the head sculpt itself, it is on a traditional style joint. There's one neck peg at the top and then one at the base as well, so you can get the top head piece moving separately to the neck itself, but that lower joint is actually where you're getting most of the motion. You'll notice as well, I've opted to leave the scarf on just so I can show you how this all works. Now, the arms themselves are a little bit more restricted on this side because of this piece of armor, but nevertheless, it goes up to about there, then it starts butting into the neck itself, whereas on this side, it pretty Pretty much can go all the way up. The suit is rubber though, so it will restrict it a little bit and kind of bounce it back down. Now he does have going forward to about there, and again it will sort of get a little bit restricted by the rubber outfit. You do have a swivel at the bicep, a really nice double bend at the elbow, and a teeny tiny little wrist peg for the hand itself. Now the waist and the torso is actually quite surprising in how much you can move it. You can bend it forward to about there. That is a lot of crunch out of a super tiny little figure wearing a a multi-layered rubber suit. You can swivel there as well, pivot, so you're getting a bunch of motion out of a joint that I really didn't think would be able to move at all. The legs themselves, they're rather stiff, but they go forward to about there. They also go out to
to about there as well. They're a little bit more restricted because of the belt and this holster sort of setup. So just be careful when you're moving everything around. For the legs, you do have a pretty decent single bend at the knee. I can't get a second bend to activate, so I'm pretty sure that is the limit. You do have a swivel at the thigh. And then for the foot itself, it is on an independent peg, but also he has tiny little toe articulation. It's a little bit ugly in the way they've done it, but it definitely does work. Now the tail itself as well is on a ball joint, so it moves around. The up and down isn't as great as you'd expect, and it can pop off if you're not careful, but it definitely gets the job done. Just going over the three cool and three annoying things with the end game rocket. The first annoying thing, and it is kind of, to me at least, a bit of a big deal, is this little sort of glossy spot that you can see on the top of his head. That's because of the goggles. When you are putting them on the head, the magnet is so very strong that it sort of pulls the goggles right down towards the head and scuffs it up. So you can see that I am getting little shiny spots on the head sculpt itself. The second annoying thing, and I'm not exactly sure why it's an issue, but it's the scarf itself. Why have a fully wired scarf if you're just going to sew it at two points anyway? Sewn right here and it's sewn right there. So you can kind of only get it going out in one certain direction. Yes, you can pull this one around, but if you wanted to have this one out all the way trailing to the back, you'd have to rotate the entire thing and it's not technically supposed to be that way around so I don't know why they've sewn that in just let us be able to decide which way we'd like these little pieces to go the third annoying thing is the choice of material for the body why on earth does Hot Toys always insist on using this rubbery type material they used a fabric style screen printed composite right here and having bent the knees for a couple of you know posing sessions I haven't had any issues or wrinkling at all whereas this guy is entirely made of this rubber composite material and it's already created I've barely done anything to this figure in the way of posing and it's looking like I've done an entire posing marathon I don't know why they insist on using this style of fabric the first cool thing and I know I was complaining about it earlier But at the very least they made an engineering decision and popped in some toe articulation Is it the best looking toe articulation in the world? Yeah, probably not But at least it's functional and you can get him into some pretty awesome running poses the second cool thing And yes, I'm still annoyed about the scuffage from the goggles, but they did actually do some engineering choices and pop the different polarity magnets in the goggles themselves. That's a cool touch, not something that I was expecting. I was thinking there would be a horrid strap that goes around the back. This, in my opinion, is a far better option. And the third cool thing, because it's technically a pretty much reused figure, it's the amount of accessories. You're getting all new accessories, pretty much, and you're getting a second option for the scarf. Again, that's something that they absolutely didn't have to do, but in my opinion, they went all out and gave Rocket as many things as they could possibly think of. Just wrapping up on the Hot Toys Endgame Rocket Raccoon. I mean, what a surprise release. This literally came out of nowhere. I think it was 10 or 11 months. That is a very, very quick turnaround by Hot Toys. Yes, I would have rathered a Mark 85 or an Ant-Man or a Wasp, but still, that being said, I'm not ungrateful. I still absolutely love this version of Rocket. As I said in this video, this is my favorite look for Rocket in the MCU, so I'm now very glad to be adding it to my shelf. I remember back in San Diego when everyone was questioning whether or not they'd actually do this figure. He was on display, we could see him, he looked great, but it had been a couple of weeks and we hadn't heard anything. And then finally, Hot Toys announced him and now here he is. He looks really, really good. The accessories are great. The body, just as we saw with the previous versions of Rocket, again, is really, really good. The head sculpts, however, Oh, I should say head sculpt is where this figure is let down. He only comes with one. I don't know why Hot Toys didn't take this opportunity because they're saving money on the body. They're saving money on one of the heads. Why didn't we get an all new head sculpt with a smiling expression, with a sad expression to go along with Groot? We could have gotten a bunch of different looks for Rocket. They could have at least included one more. And I'm so very bummed that they didn't. But either way, I'm still glad we're getting the figure. I love the look. I love the other accessories that he comes with. And I love the subtle engineering decisions, especially with the goggles. They really do work for this figure. Now, if you'd like to add your very own Endgame Rocket to your collection, he is in stock right now with ToysWonderland.com. And I've included the link down in the description below. Head over there and definitely check them out. While you're down in the description, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, See what's coming up next on the channel, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.